Hello everyone, this is Danny from creatingawebstore.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create an e-commerce website, in other words an online store in literally minutes. This tutorial actually goes over every single step in detail. So by the time you're finished watching this video you'll have a store that looks just like this. You can actually even customize the store. For example, you can get a new theme for it that will make it look a little nicer. I'm actually using a free theme so my uh, store looks a little bland. But of course this can be changed. There are many themes out there and I actually have a list on my site that you can look at to see all the themes that are available. But we can worry about that later and of course this theme is fine if you're not looking for anything special. Uh, and it actually has many nice features. For example, it's mobile friendly. When I adjust the screen size you'll see that the theme actually adjusts to the screen size of my browser. So if you're on a mobile device such as a cell phone or tablet the screen will actually adjust to the size of that cell phone or tablet. So all you really need to get a store such as this one up and running is a web hosting account. If you have a web hosting account you can use the account that you have. If you don't have one I actually have some recommendations on my site that can uh, speed up the installation process even more. And you also need a domain name and I recommend an SSL certificate. Whether you want to install an SSL certificate is up to you but I recommend it because it makes savvy buyers a little bit more comfortable about shopping on your site. If this is your first time hearing about an SSL certificate, what an SSL certificate actually does is it actually encrypts private information that your buyer enters during the checkout process. For example, when they enter in their name, password, uh, username, uh, street address, etc. That SSL certificate encrypts that data so that others can get to it. But don't worry about that for now. I have a written tutorial on this and when you're finished watching the video you can always take a look at that. As for the cost of the program, this program is open source, which in other words means that it's free to use. So when you make a sale, you won't be paying any type of fees for it other than your credit card processing fees or PayPal processing fees. The store is actually running on WordPress, which is a free content management system. It's actually one of the most popular on the web today, and it's used by many trusted sites such as CNN, People, and many others. Of course, installing WordPress alone does not uh, provide the ability to uh, operate an online store. What I actually did is I installed WooCommerce, which is a plugin that is available for WordPress, which is also free, and that's how we got this beautiful store up and running. And it has many features. For example, you can add categories as well as subcategories, a search box, which is right here, sort ordering, shopping cart widget filters, options, for example, you can have your customer select the size or a color. Or if you'd like, you can just create a simple listing such as this one. And you can add a product description. You can add similar recommendations. This is great for cross-selling. You can add attributes and much, much more. So let's get started creating this online store. To start, you will need to install WordPress. Note that there are actually many web hosts out there that offer one-click WordPress installations, and you might actually be using a web host that offers this, so you might want to look into that prior to installing WordPress manually. I actually have a list of web hosts that offer one-click WordPress installations, and the link to that list is actually in the description of this video. But to install WordPress manually, simply go to WordPress.org and click on the Download WordPress button. Next, you will need to uh, install an FTP client. If you already have your own FTP client, you can simply use that. If not, you can go to filezilla-project.org to download a free FTP client. Then simply download your version and install FileZilla. Once you have installed FileZilla, simply open up the client. Then simply uh, enter in your host. In my case, it's isaveplaza.com. In your case, it might be an FTP URL. You will want to look into that prior to entering in the host. For the username and password, you likely created this information while setting up your account with your web host. If you haven't, uh, your web host might have uh, created this information for you automatically, and they may have sent that information to you via email. Once you have that information, simply enter in the information. and then click on quick connect. Now you will need to unarchive the downloaded WordPress uh, file. Note that if you are using cPanel 
You might as well install uh, WordPress through the cPanel interface simply by clicking on the upload icon here and uploading the file in the archive format and then unarchiving once the file has been uploaded. That is actually better because it preserves folder permissions but if you do not have cPanel simply proceed with FileZilla by simply unarchiving WordPress. Once you have unarchived WordPress simply go into FileZilla and locate the file. In my case it's in downloads which is right here. And now I will simply look at my remote site and locate the folder which serves my site's files. In my case it's public underscore HTML. In your case it might be www or something else. You will want to look into that prior to uploading WordPress. And simply select that directory which serves your site's files. And then select your WordPress directory which is located on your local computer. Note that if you upload this folder as is People visiting your site will actually have to access your uh, WordPress site by going to your domain forward slash WordPress. Now if you want your visitors to uh, see your WordPress site the minute they go to your domain, you actually have to upload the files and folders from within the WordPress folder. So simply double click on the WordPress folder and then you will see the folders from within that folder and the files from within that folder right here in this other uh, window. So simply select all of these files and folders, right click and then left click on upload. And these files and folders are currently being transferred to the folder which serves your site's files which is in my case public underscore HTML. While these files and folders upload, let's create our database. In my case, I will do this in cPanel. This of course depends on your server or your web host. So you will need to figure out how to create a database first. If you have cPanel, simply follow these steps. Then simply click on MySQL database wizard. Then simply enter in a database name, which in my case will be WordPress. Click next. And here I will enter in WordPress once more for the username. You can enter in a different username if you'd like. You can actually enter in any information that you'd like. For password, I will enter in my password. And I will click on create user. And I will choose all privileges. And now my uh, database has been created and my user has been created and added to that database. So now I will make sure to remember this information so I can enter it into the WordPress config file. So now you will want to go to the URL that you installed WordPress in and you will want to enter the URL into your address bar and uh, simply visit that site. Note that if you uploaded WordPress to a subfolder you will want to go to your domain forward slash that subfolder. For example if the subfolder is WordPress you would want to go to your domain forward slash WordPress. And here on the installation wizard you will get an error. It will tell you that a wp-config.php file is missing. So we need to create it. To create the file simply click on create a configuration file. Note that you can even edit a wp-config-sample.php file manually and enter in this information but it's actually easier to use the wizard. So let's use the wizard. So now you will need to have that database name, the database username, the database password, and the database host ready. We actually created the database name, username, and password earlier. So simply click on let's go. For database name, my name is actually I save underscore WordPress and username is the same. And my password And now for database host, I will enter in localhost. If you are using a host that is different from localhost, you will want to use that. So uh, please look into it prior to entering in a database host. As for table prefix, you can use this table prefix or another. If you already have a WordPress uh, installed in the same database, you will want to use a different prefix. And then simply click on submit. And as you can see, if you entered all your information correctly, everything is fine. WordPress can communicate with your database. So simply click on the Run the Install button. Here, simply enter in a site title. In my case, it will be my domain name. For username, I will enter in a username. This is for your admin panel.
and your email and privacy you will need to decide on whether you want to allow search engines to index your site I won't because uh, this is a demo site if uh, yours is a live site you'll want to check off this box and then simply click on install WordPress and now simply log in and my login has been successful and now we will test to see whether we can upload images first let's look at our home page and as you can see I have the typical hello world uh, blog post so I simply go to posts and I edit this post and I try to upload an image and as you can see the image uploaded successfully now if your image didn't upload successfully simply go to where your uh, WordPress installation is located I will use cPanel so that you can see better what I'm doing so as you can see all my directories have 755 permissions you will want to make sure that every single directory has 755 permissions this includes all subdirectories as well and you can do this in FileZilla by simply going to FileZilla and then locating your WordPress installation and then simply right clicking on each folder and left clicking on file permissions and simply change the numeric value to 755 and click OK and if that doesn't work try changing the permissions to 777 while WordPress doesn't recommend it that's the only other way that I can think of solving the problem so once you have WordPress installed simply go to your WordPress admin panel and then simply install uh, WooCommerce which is the first step by going to plugins and clicking on add new and here simply enter in WooCommerce that's W-O-O-C-O-M-M-E-R-C-E -O -O -E, and click on search plugins and that is this first one right here and simply click on install now and click on OK and WooCommerce has been installed and now we simply click on activate plugin now simply click on install WooCommerce pages and now once the pages have been set up simply go to settings here you will want to select the values that um, apply to your store for example the base location for me will be United States Florida selling locations this is if you want to limit to certain countries you can sell to all countries or specify only a certain number of countries for example I can choose countries here and what I will do is I will simply select Canada and then I will go down and select United States since I only want to sell to these two countries as for store notice this is if you want uh, people to be notified that it's a demo store uh, for demonstration purposes I will leave this off even though I should enable it if you have a live store you'll obviously want to leave this box unchecked because uh, you do not want that notice up for currency I will choose my currency in my case it's US dollar and currency position this is fine you can change the currency position as you like and all of this is also fine in my case depending on uh, which part of uh, the world you're located in you might have to change this information if not you can leave it as is and enable lightbox this is for the gallery uh, here on my demo site I can show you what it looks like this is the lightbox so I will leave it enabled and en enable enhance country select boxes and I'll leave that as is and I will simply click on save changes and now that my changes have been saved I will simply go to products and here this is the product archive shop page I will leave it on shop you can actually change this if you'd like in uh, my case I will just leave it on shop since this is perfectly fine and I'm sure this will be fine in your case as well unless you have another page that's named uh, the same thing and uh, for all of this I will just leave it as is you can always look through this and select whichever you prefer if you do not know what this looks like you can always uh, test these things out once you have items in your store for example you can go back to settings and change this and then uh, save it and see how it looks in your store how it displays things 
For Add to Cart, you can uh, choose whether to redirect to the cart page after successful addition or enable Ajax Add to Cart buttons on archives. Uh, this is actually fine for me, Ajax, uh, which means that the person won't be actually redirected. It will look something like this instead. As for weight unit, I will select pounds. Dimension unit, I will select inches because I'm in the United States. Uh, do you want to enable ratings? Of course, this is all up to you. You can uh, decide on your own how you'd like uh, this all to be displayed. And catalog images, I'll leave it at 150 by 150 pixels. You can always change it. Same goes for the rest of the values. And for downloadable products, you will want to select whether you want to force downloads or not. I'll just uh, leave it on force downloads. As for access restriction, do you want to uh, require login for downloads? And I want to actually require login for downloads and then simply click on save changes. So now we will go to tax. If you want to enable tax, simply uh, click on the checkbox here, enable taxes and tax calculations. Whether prices entered with tax, uh, will you enter the prices with tax or without taxes? I will uh, enter them without taxes. And uh, how you want the taxes to be calculated, I want it on the shipping address. Uh, default customer address, I actually want no address. This is when uh, the person goes to the shopping cart. Do you want a default address being shown there? Uh, shipping tax class, uh, you can choose which one you'd like. I'm going to use uh, standard. And rounding, uh, do you want to round tax at subtotal level instead of rounding uh, per line? I'll choose uh, yes. For this, I'll check this off. And additional tax classes, I won't be using any additional tax classes. This, of course, is up to you. Uh, display prices in shop, I want them to display without taxes. Uh, and price display uh, suffix, this is all uh, up to you whether you want to enter in any type of information here. Uh, for example, it could be including VAT as uh, explained here. And uh, display prices during cart checkout, I will exclude taxes. And display tax total itemized or as a single total. And I want it as a single total. And I will click on save changes. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to standard rates because this is what I selected here. Once on this page, I can click on Insert Row. Here what I can do is I can actually limit uh, these tax uh, calculations based on specific uh, cities or countries or zip codes or whatever. Here I'm just going to enter in 7%. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check off shipping because I don't want tax to be calculated on shipping as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in US for country code and FL for Florida and for zip code I'll leave all zip codes within Florida. Note that you can actually use a wildcard for example if you want to specify a, a specific rate for certain areas in your uh, state you can actually enter in for example 337 and then asterisk here and what happens is, is it actually calculates uh, this 7% for all zip codes that start with 337 and if you just enter in the asterisk as I did, it will uh, actually calculate 7% uh, for all zip codes in Florida. Now, if you want to charge tax for different states as well, you would simply click on uh, Insert Row. And then you would again enter in the country code. And then you would enter in, for example, New York. And then here you would enter in that tax rate. And you would keep going like that for a country code. You were basically like, for example, for Canada, I would enter in CA and then I would decide on whether I want to enter in a state code or a zip code and then I would enter in the rate here and that's how it would all work. In my case I'm only going to uh, uh, charge tax in Florida so I will remove these other rows and I will simply click on save changes. Also remember when entering in a country code that it has to be a two letter uh, code and for state code it has to be two letter code as well as explained here. Uh, note that I will actually have a list of all state codes and country codes on my site creatingwebstore.com and it will be in the link uh, that's uh, in the description of this video. Next, simply go to checkout. On this page, you can decide on whether you want to enable the use of coupons. You can always add coupons later here if you want to uh, offer coupons. For checkout, do you want to enable guest checkout? I do. For for secure checkout, I actually want to for secure checkout because I actually have an SSL certificate. I actually mentioned this in the beginning of the video. 
So if you have an SSL certificate as well, you'll want to uh, enable this. As for checkout pages, these are the checkout pages. For terms of agreement, you will actually have to create a page. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create the pages later and I'll show you how to create the terms of agreement page, the privacy page, and the uh, other uh, important pages that you will need to add. And now for checkout endpoints, I will leave all of this on the default because uh, I actually prefer uh, the way they have it set up and I don't really want to uh, mess around with this. As for gateway display, here you select uh, which uh, method of payments you want to accept. Note that anything with a check mark is actually enabled and in order to disable it you actually have to go into settings and disable it. As you can see you have quite a few uh, different payment methods that you can choose from. Note that if your uh, payment method isn't uh, listed here I actually have a list of other payment uh, methods that you can add to WooCommerce which is again located on my site. You can actually see the URL to that page in uh, the description of this video and there I have a couple of other payment methods that you can add. Note that with each of these payment methods you actually have to set them up uh, by going to settings here. But before doing so be sure to save these changes and then go to settings. So to enable PayPal you simply make sure that enable PayPal standard is ticked off. As for the PayPal email address this is where you'd like to receive payments and uh, for the rest of the fields you can simply uh, follow these little question marks for explanations of uh, each field. Uh, note that whenever enabling a payment method I recommend testing that payment method. For example if you enable PayPal I recommend placing a test order and testing out the button to see whether it's working properly because uh, PayPal uh, at times throws off uh, certain errors such as this one. The seller accepts uh, encrypted website payments only. You cannot pay the seller through unencrypted buttons. Please contact the seller for more details. This pretty much uh, happens on all uh, PayPal accounts that haven't been set up uh, to uh, work with uh, websites that do not uh, encrypt buttons. So if you receive this error, I actually have uh, information on how to fix the error at my website again the URL is in the description of this video. So now we simply save changes and now we go back to our uh, payment methods here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable check and uh, bank transfers so I'm simply going to go to settings for each of these and I'm just going to uh, make sure that that's marked off right there and I'm going to make sure that this is checked off And what I'm going to do is, uh, to make it fun, I'm just going to enable COD. And now we can proceed to shipping. Here you can actually set up shipping as you'd like. You have flat rate, free shipping, international delivery, local delivery, and local pickup. Note that there are additional plugins available for shipping. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, leave everything as is, except for restrict uh, shipping to locations and here I will simply enter in my uh, specific countries which is Canada and the United States and then I will save this and now what I'll do is I'll go to free shipping here and I'll actually leave free shipping enabled and I'll actually only allow free shipping to the United States and uh, I will actually uh, put in a minimum order value and that's going to be $49 and I'm going to save this and then I'm also going to enable flat rate so I will make sure to check off the box here and I will enter in USPS priority mail for the method title and for the cost I will enter in 495 and here I'm actually going to add additional rates there's more information on this here you basically add the method name a uh, pipe the cost and then another pipe followed by a sort order so I will enter in express mail pipe 1999 pipe sort order will be one and then I'll make a new line and I'll enter in UPS 
and then I'll enter in a pipe and then 999 and then a pipe and 2 so since this has a 1 it will show up above uh, UPS and if you enter in uh, more options you simply start a new line in my opinion this is actually pretty cool because uh, out of all the shopping carts that I've tried and I've actually tried quite a few this is the only shopping cart that I've found to have uh, multiple flat rate shipping methods available that you can enter so I know many people will like this when finished simply click on save changes and now I'm going to enter in international delivery as well so I will make sure to enable this shipping method and I'll leave it on availability on selected countries and here I will select Canada and for the cost I will enter in 999 and now I will simply click on save changes so now we'll just go to shipping options here and we can actually change the sort order of the shipping uh, methods for example I can put free shipping up there first and then USPS priority mail second and so on so I will click on save changes and now we will go to accounts and here this is pretty much self-explanatory and you can basically read through this and uh, set everything up to your liking same goes for emails here this is pretty uh, easy to understand so now we can go to actually create uh, something in our store so let's start by creating categories by going to products and left clicking on categories so my first category will be clothing and I'm going to leave everything here empty if you'd like to enter in a description you can uh, same goes for image I'll just uh, speed up the process so I'll leave all that out and I'll click on add new category and now the category has been added and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add subcategories so I will add shirts and the parent will be clothing so when people click on clothing they will get shirts afterwards so it will be a subcategory and I'll click on add new product category and now it's been added and now I'm going to add one more under clothing and that will be shoes and now what I'll do is I'll add a new category and that will be for electronics and this will actually have no parent because it will be a main category and not a subcategory and then we can even uh, change the sort order by simply dragging so now I want to add attributes uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add attributes for size and color you don't have to do this it's up to you I personally want to do it because I want to uh, uh, demonstrate something for you so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in size here and for type I'm going to use uh, text and then the default sort order will be custom ordering and now I will enter in color and I will choose uh, text again and I will add the attribute and now we can finally add a product and after I add a product I'm actually going to show you how to set up uh, your store so that it looks right and so that it's search engine friendly and all that other stuff so let's add a product so I will start by adding a simple product and this will be for a uh, cell phone this right here is my long description and I will use simple product note that you can also use uh, virtual downloadable grouped external affiliate product or variable product I'm actually going to also demonstrate variable product virtual is basically a product that you do not uh, ship it can be a service and downloadable would be if you're selling files such as music movies games um, anything else that you can think of for SKU I'll just enter in a unique SKU and this is my price right here as for sale price I will be adding a sale price you can actually schedule the sale price if you'd like tax status uh, it will be taxable and tax class it will be standard and for inventory I will click on this box right here because I want to manage stock since I have limited uh, quantities if you have unlimited quantities you won't need to uh, manage stock if you don't want to for weight I'll enter in one pound 
I don't have any products to link. I'll actually uh, show you how this works once I have products up and running. And for attributes, I won't be adding any attributes here. And for the short description, I'll basically enter in this right here. And now I will choose my category. And I only have one image, so I won't be using a product gallery, but I will be using a product image. And I will be simply uploading this image right here. And that will be the phone. And it has been added. And now I will publish. And now I will simply view the item. And there it is. And it's on sale. As you can see, the price has been crossed out. And now I will show you how to add a variable product. Simply go back to add product. And I will be adding some shoes. And I'll select variable product from the drop down list here. And the SKU will be 2. And my inventory, I'll just leave everything as is. And for shipping, I will enter in one pound. And I will go to attributes and I'll use my size attribute and I'll add it. And then I'll simply enter in my sizes and it, they will be separated by a pipe. So now when a person comes to actually buy these shoes, there will be a drop down menu with each of these sizes. So if you're going to add variables such as these, what you're going to do is you're going to want to separate each uh, variable the pipe and then simply click on save attributes and next go to variations and now I will simply add variations and there are actually four of them and I'll just make sure to choose the size for each And now I'll simply do a bulk edit, and that will be the prices because they're all going to be the same. I'm just going to enter in $89.99. And now the price has been added here in all boxes. And the weight will also be the same. And for stock quantity, I have uh, the same amount in stock, and that will be 12 and for the SKU, I'll just leave it empty because it will use the main SKU. And now I'm going to enter in my short description. And before I do anything else, I'm actually going to add one more attribute, and that will be color. And this will be visible on the product page, and it will not be used for variations, and this will be red and simply click on save attributes then I will simply choose a category and I will add an image and I will set as product image and now I will publish and now we will see this item as well and as you can see the customer must choose an option. And for additional information, we have color here. So now I want to add another item that's the color red because I want to actually show you how we can create a menu with the attribute values that can be filtered. So we're simply going to click on Add Product. And I'll actually speed this up a bit since you've already seen how all of this works. And if you want to uh, link products, you simply go to link products and you simply enter in the name here. For example, mine already came up, but if I were to enter in 9 West, it would come up and I would just select it. And then um, that item would show up on the product view page. And if I want to cross sell, I basically do the same thing. And I just uh, enter in a name there that I want 
uh, to show up. For example, if I want my cell phone to show up, I simply enter in Nokia, and there's my phone right there, and select it, and then it will show up. And uh, for attributes here, I'm going to add my color attribute, and it will be red, and it will be visible on the page. And then I simply, since I don't have the category, I will add a new category, and this will be furniture. And it has been added. And now I will select my image, and it will be of that chair. And now I will publish. And now my chair has been listed as well. So now I'm going to show you how to customize your store. For example, right here I have my shop. This is where all my products show up, but I'm not really happy with the way this looks. So of course if you already have a theme, you can use the theme that you have. But in my case, I'm going to actually change my theme. But before I do that, what I want to show you is I want to show you uh, SEO friendly URLs because I don't really like this right here. If uh, you're familiar with WordPress and you're actually just watching this video just for uh, WooCommerce, you already know this stuff, but there's actually an area there in uh, settings where you also have to change uh, the way WooCommerce items are showing up as well. So I'll simply go to settings and permalinks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to post name. And for WooCommerce, I'm actually going to change this to product as so. And you can actually have the category if you'd like as well. I'll actually do that instead. So right now my uh, store, my domain will show up, shop, and then the product category, and then the product name will show up in my URL. So now when we go back to our shop here, you will see how the new URL looks. And it looks much, much nicer. And now it's SEO friendly. So now let's take care of that theme. So start by simply going to Appearance and click on Themes. And I'm actually going to use the theme that I showed you initially, which is this theme right here. So I will activate the theme. So now you can see how this new theme looks. And it looks much nicer in my opinion. And now I'm going to customize the theme. So I will change my tagline. For colors, I will leave everything as is. Header, I will actually hide the image. And for front page, I will actually use a static page, which will be my store. Of course, if you have a blog, you're not going to want to uh, have your store maybe on the front page. But if you're building uh, this store to simply sell products and nothing else and have no blog post or anything like that, you're going to want to select your shop here and then uh, right here in main widgets area I'm actually going to delete a lot of what applies to WordPress because I'm not really interested in using that since we're actually going to set up a real store and nothing else so I will actually remove everything that's right here And this is from the footer section, and it will all be gone, as you can see. But we're going to actually add a new footer later on, which is going to have our uh, terms of agreement, our privacy policy, and other things. So now for the secondary widget, which is right here in the sidebar, I'm going to add a widget. And this is all going to be WooCommerce related. So I will first add my product category widget. And I will make sure to check off only show children of the current category because I don't want subcategories to uh, be shown until I actually click on the parent category. And then I will click on add widget again. And now what I'll do is I'll actually add a price filter. And now I'll add another widget. And that will be for this uh, layered nav, which is for attributes and I will simply choose my color attribute and now when people view my store they can actually filter the products by the attribute for example that attribute is color and I have two items here 
and now I will click on save and publish and I will close now before we start removing things why don't we start adding some pages like for example let's add our privacy page terms of agreement page shipping and returns page etc so let's start by clicking on pages and here I'm actually going to remove the sample page because I don't need it this is what WordPress installs automatically so that we can uh, see what a sample page looks like I don't actually need this and now I'm going to click on add new page so my first page will be my terms of agreement page and I simply add it like so and I click on publish and my second page will be my about page and it will look like so and now I will add a privacy page like so and just one more page and this is shipping and returns and now we're going to go back to our WooCommerce settings page and we're going to add that terms of agreement page and that will be in checkout and we're going to go to terms and conditions here and we're simply going to select our page and we're going to click on save changes so now we will go back to our store and we will look at the outcome of our changes and what I want to do is I want to get rid of a lot of these uh, links right here I'm going to go to appearance and then menus and now I will simply remove uh, links that I don't want to show up here and that will be this right here I want to completely remove this and I want to remove the policy and I want to remove the shipping and returns and I want to remove the terms of agreement and I actually want to move all those links down here so I will create a new menu and now I will simply click on create a new menu and the name will be footer and I will click on create menu and now I will simply select the pages that I want to show up in this menu and that will be shipping and returns privacy about and terms of agreement and I will click on add to menu and now I will simply order all of this to my liking and I will change this to about us and the rest looks fine and I will click on save menu and now when we go back to our store you will notice that we still have these links at the top and that's because we have to assign a new navigation menu so we simply go here to navigation menu and we choose menu 1 and we click on save changes and now our new menu has uh, taken place of the old one and now what we will do is we will add the footer to the footer of our uh, site so simply go back to customize and now where it says main widget area which is in the footer section here we add a widget and we go to where it says custom menu and here we simply select footer and I will leave the title empty and I will click on save and publish and now I will close this and I will visit my site once more and now I have an awesome looking menu at the bottom of my site so now we have this wonderful looking store and we can test it out so here we'll filter by color first and we only get red items and now I'm going to remove this and we get all items 
and then if we go to clothing we have our shoes electronics we have our cell phone and then furniture we have our furniture and now we can add items to the cart and we can view our cart so here is our cart and as you can see I have United States New York set and the tax is zero and we have our free shipping our USPS priority mail shipping our USPS express mail shipping and our UPS shipping so now if I were to change this to Florida and now we'll have tax added as well and if I were to change this to Canada we would have our uh, international delivery charged so now if I were to go to uh, proceed to checkout and since I enabled for secure checkout my uh, protocol has changed from HTTP to HTTPS so now my checkout pages are secure and since I have an SSL certificate this is possible now notice that I haven't added the shopping cart widget here mainly because I have the cart link in the header here to add the shopping cart widget simply go back to your admin panel go to customize go to widgets secondary widget area and then simply add a new widget and then we will choose the WooCommerce cart and I'll simply leave it as cart and I'll hide it if it's empty and I will simply reorder this WooCommerce cart higher up so that it shows right up here and I will click on save and publish and close and now our cart will be visible in the right column so thank you very much for watching stay tuned for more videos and also be sure to check out creatingawebstore.com